Welcome, everyone, to another Fish Report Live. My name is Craig Fissinger. That's Ken Francis. We're your host tonight back in our sound room. Just Heavy D tonight, and that's because TK is taking the week off. We'll check in with Heavy D a little bit later in the show. Ken, uh, we're into May now. The tournament draw for baseball and softball was this past Sunday. Still got a few league uh, league battles to decide yet. Uh, and for those teams that are, are out of it, tournament's kind of a whole new season for them, isn't it? Yeah, it is, Craig. Uh, you know, everybody starts back at 0-0 zero and, zero and, uh, in baseball and softball, Craig. Uh, anything can happen. Uh, I'm more tuned to watching baseball, but uh, I know girls' fast pitch is very similar. And uh, like they say in the major leagues, Craig, uh, everybody's going to win a third of your games. Everybody's going to lose a third. It's the other third that matters the most. So, uh, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of strange things happen in baseball. You can hit uh, hit line drives all night right at people, and the other team catches them. And uh, when you're in defense, uh, a walk, an error, a bloop, and a blast, and pretty soon you get beat three to two. So. Anything can happen. That's for sure. And uh, we got a couple big interviews tonight. We're going to be talking to some coaches. Going to kind of favor, favor the Midwest Athletic Conference tonight. And one of the coaches we're talking to, she's already got a MAC title under her belt this season. The other one's uh, still battling for one, isn't he? Yes, sir, Craig. Uh, we're going to talk to uh, Jerry Kopp, the Fort Recovery High School baseball coach. Really looking forward to talking to him. He's got a great, exciting team this year, Craig. Uh, he was ranked number one in the state in Division Four. Had a big win over Coldwater last week. We're going to talk about that one a little bit. Uh, he's going to be playing for a MAC championship against the St. Henry Redskins Friday night, and we're looking forward to talking to uh, Coach Kopp about that. Also, Craig, we're going to go over to Versailles and talk to the head coach of the Lady Tiger Fast Pitch Girls Softball Team, Michelle Heitkamp. Really looking forward to talking to Michelle. Her team has already, Craig, wrapped up a MAC championship. Had her on our show a couple years ago. Looking forward to talking to her again tonight. All right. Well, can't wait to get to that. But before we do, just like we do every week, have a weekly trivia question. And tonight, you're going to keep it in the MAC. What's tonight's trivia question? We're going to talk MAC, Craig. Uh, the MAC started out uh, back in the early 70s, Craig, believe it or not, with a lot of teams out of the, C the current CCC conference were in the MAC. Uh, as they grew in 2001, they picked up for sales. Uh, when Versailles was added to the league, Craig, in 2001, what league was Versailles in prior to joining the MAC? Were they in the CCC, the NWCC, the SRC, which was the Southwest Rivers Conference, or were they an independent and not in any league? Okay, well, that's a good question. Actually, I thought I knew the answer to that one, but uh, with all those choices you gave me, uh, you got me thinking now. So I'm going to ask for a little help from the viewers out there. If you're watching us on the Fish Report live page, you can scroll down on, on the web page there, answer the trivia question, check the results. If you're watching us on NK Telco, Cable TV Channel 3, uh, or up there in, at TSC Cable in uh, Channel 702 up in St. Mary's and Wapak. We will have those, those answers for you at the end of the show. All right, Ken, let's get things started. You mentioned Jerry Kopp over there at uh, Fort Recovery and uh, how he's battling for a MAC title right now. Let's take a quick look at the standings, see how they're setting up right now, see where uh, Fort Recovery and, and, and St. Henry is at. Well, Craig, uh, St. Henry's sitting at 7-0 in the league standings. They're 12-5 and overall. Uh, I seen St. Henry play early in the year. Our Rushi Raiders actually played a great game against them. Uh, actually beat St. Henry. That might have been the last loss they've had all year. Uh, they've pretty much run the table since. Uh, Fort Recovery, Craig, having an outstanding season. Just one game back. It's going to be decided Friday night. Either St. Henry and or Fort Recovery is going to win the MAC. All right. Well, can't wait to hear how that's going to work. And uh, to do that, we're going to talk to the head coach of the Fort Recovery innings, have him live on the phone right now, Coach uh, Jerry Kalp. Wel welcome to Fish Report Live, and thanks for joining us. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, I'm not sure if you considered a blessing or a curse playing there in the MAC, where you're challenged year after year and probably the toughest small school conference in the state, uh, you know, 
for years for recovery, kind of bounced around on the bottom of those league standings. But uh, here lately, uh, I know you, you finished third in the conference uh, about a y- year ago. Right now you're sitting in second, battling for first place. Coach, w- what's caused the turnaround in Fort Recovery baseball the last several years? Well, that's a good that's a good question. Um, I think we've taken a different approach maybe with how we're preparing for the season. Um, we probably focus less on winning than we do on trying to learn and get better every day. Um, it's it's a game we enjoy playing and and so we we found when when we started we we found that we I think our baseball IQ wasn't quite what it was needed to be. And then I also think that our skill sets were not where it needed to be. So we do a lot of talking about baseball, the game, what it means, how to hit with runners in position, things like that. And then we also kind of grade our competencies at fundamental baseball. So we try to compare or find data that shows what a good high school team does as far as fielding the ball, air rate batting averages, things like that. And then we try to compare ourselves with that. And then uh, if we feel that we can get to that competency level, then we we feel we can go out and play and and give it the best shot that we have. So we don't focus as much on winning as we do on doing the right things each time. All right, well, that's an interesting answer, Coach. Uh, I I do know that part of your success, though, has to be the strength of your pitching staff. Uh, you know, I look at looked at a lot of your scores this season. You've had a lot of shutouts, a lot of one-two run games. You've given up just one or two runs. Who who are some of the who who are the the top maybe two or three pitchers on your staff right now? Well, right now we we have a staff of about four guys that we depend on that start most of our games and get the primary innings, and that's the junior Jackson Hobbs. Uh, he was an All State uh, player last year. This year he's back as a junior, um, has had an excellent year. Last year he was recovering from ACL surgery. This year he's uh, returned. He seems healthier. I think he's throwing the ball with more authority and and uh, speed as he comes off the mound. So he's probably our, our top pitcher. And then we have senior Cole Wendell, who's uh, pitched for us for three years, um, a quality starter, and and then we have juniors Jacob Holman and Chase Bruins. And we do throw throughout the season, uh, winter, most of these guys play other sports, but we try to get them in there and, and throw uh, on a regular basis throughout the winter just to try to stay sharp and improve. And that's when we work on our different pitchers, whether it's a slider or curve or, or change up or whatever. Coach, hi, this is Ken so, Frank. This is Ken Frank. What's that? Hi, how are you doing tonight? Let's talk a little bit about uh, your game Friday night. Uh, you've got a big game, uh, MAC uh, championship on the line versus the St. Henry Redskins. Uh, they're sitting at seven zero. You're sitting at seven and one. Big game, but uh, let's you know, assuming you can win that game. Uh, but what what's it take to beat St. Henry? What what's what's it going to have to do for the Indians to win that game? Well, St. Henry this year has really strong pitching especially their two, Stallman and Mike Sell. They are very overpowering and then crafty when they need to be. So they have great pitching. Um, I think as a team, they they really know how to play the game of baseball. I think that uh, their kids follow their professional teams. I think they watch baseball on TV, and uh, and they they have an instinct for baseball. And... Coach Dorner does an excellent job at game management. Um, He feels what's going on in the game, you know, senses if it's a tight pitching duel, if it's a, um, you know, if the weather is windy or if it's raining. And he always does a really good job with that. And then he always has his kids play hard, and they're aggressive on the base pass. So for us, we need to have our starter through a nice ball game, we got to stay. We got to stay in the game, and then we know that we're going to have to earn it. I don't anticipate St. Henry giving us, you know, this game. I think that we're going to have to earn it, and that's that's what we're going to have to do. I think it's going to be a low scoring game. I think one run could certainly determine it, and uh, it should be it should be a good MAC ball game. I'm hoping. Absolutely agree with you there. 
Uh, let's let's look at the Mac, the history of the Mac. On one end of the spectrum, you've got the Coldwater team. They they've dominated Mac baseball over the years. They've got twenty eight state or twenty eight championships in the Mac. Uh, your your Indians are looking for the first ever in school history. What does it mean to the program to go out there and win a Mac title? Was that a goal of yours when the season started? And uh, the importance of winning the Mac. Well, um, yeah. I, I think it's a goal. You know, we 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 talk about winning the MAC, and 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 there's so many things that you have to be good at. You just have to have a really solid ball club, pitching and defense. You've got to have pitching and defense. But this year in the MAC, I would say there were six teams that have a really solid starter, and so it doesn't matter what night you're playing, we play two games a week, we know we're going to be facing a very solid starter. So pitching and defense wins games, uh, and then you have to have have some, uh, you know, some hopefully some consistent offensive at-bats. Now, for Fort Recovery uh, to win the MAC, that would be great for the, the program and for the school. Um the the teams that are in the MAC Coldwater is just an awesome dominating program every year with with what they put on the field and then with St Henry Versailles Minster uh, Delphus um, it's just a very difficult and Parkway it's just a very difficult it's it's very difficult I told someone before the first before the first game again this year I really thought that two losses would still win the MAC still possible. Uh, you know, we're hoping that we can get through it with one, um, but it'd be it'd be awesome for the school. It'd be wonderful for our program to win the MAC. All right, Coach. Hey, listen. One more question. We'll let you go. I, I actually want to go back to last week. We we tried to get you on our show the night after your your big win over Coldwater. Our schedules didn't quite work out, so that didn't happen. But I, I'd still like to ask you about that game. You know, a lot of hype went into it. You were the top ranked team in Division Four. You still are. Uh, Coldwater was the top ranked team in Division Three at the time. They're they're actually down to number two right now. But I heard Veterans Field was packed for that game. What was that environment like for your kids? Well, that was a whole new experience for anything in for recovery baseball. Um, the, you know, they announced the crowd at fifteen, sixteen hundred 1,600 people, um, a tremendous amount of energy you could feel circulating in that part. And, you know, the two communities had kind of come together. There was a lot of back and forth. We're very close. You know, we know each other. Um, people in Coldwater are friends of mine, and, and so... It was just such a large crowd, and it was it was a coming together of two communities to support these bigger causes. And I, I truthfully think it inspired our players. Um, they were they were kind of awestruck, especially early. So we were worried about that. Game got started. We had our jitters, but so did the other side. And then it settled down to where it got to be a real. Uh, a real exciting back and forth, and, and when we could score that run in the fifth inning, get it tied, and know that we have a couple innings to go, you know, our kids started to the jitters kind of left. We were in our our work mode, and um, you know, we had an opportunity to win, and we were able to stay focused and perform. And then when it was over, you know, we were just thrilled and proud to be a part of it. So it, it was it was an awesome experience for for our kids, and it'll be wonderful for our program as we go forward. Coach, well, listen, uh, I want to thank you for being on our show tonight. Um, you know, you've had an exciting year over there. Wish you the best of luck uh, this Friday night. And, uh, Coach, i got to be honest with you, we, we play a little baseball over here in Rushi, too, <laughs> and uh, I would love nothing more than opportunity. Uh, I've got some close contacts with the Rushi baseball team and uh, would absolutely love nothing better than to play you guys down at uh, Wittenberg Stadium in the regionals. Well, we would certainly love that. And, you know, we, we've been rated number one, and, and I, I see those clippings, and but we know that's a precarious perch, and, and we, we're thrilled the fact that it's a coach's poll, which means peers have voted on it. Uh, we're very honored by that. But truly, I see the names that are, are just below us with the Sydney Laymans and the Rushis and the Fort Laramies, and, you know, those games can go either way. Um, we we understand that, and and if we could play Rushi in the in the dis or in the regionals there at Wittenberg, 
we would be thrilled. That would be great. Well, listen, appreciate uh, taking your time to be on our show tonight, and best of luck to you the rest of the season. Thank you so much for letting me on. Thanks, Thanks coach. coach. Okay, bye-bye. Goodbye. I was the head coach of the Fort Recovery Indians there, Ken, uh, Jerry Kalp, and a uh, good guy. They had a big game last week against Coldwater. Got another big game coming up this Friday against St. Henry, don't they? Yeah, they do, Craig. Uh, I can already see the pitching matchup. Jackson Hobbs for the Fort Recovery Indians against Mitchell Stallman of the Redskins. And uh, going to be a great game. Uh, if we weren't playing ourselves, I'd maybe drive over and watch it. And uh, we got just a minute here yet. Uh, so real quick recap on what's going on in the Shelby County League. Of course, we're always paying attention to that. What, what have we got cooking there? Absolutely, Craig. Uh, Anna kind of took control of the league the other night. Uh, they, they've got just one loss, Fort Lormie. They beat Fort Lormie. Fort Lormie now has two losses. Rushi Raiders sitting back in third place with three losses. Pretty much been a three-team battle all year. Those three teams uh, beating each other at least once or twice amongst each other throughout the season. And uh, just been a real interesting battle. But uh, Anna's in the driver's seat right now. But uh, they got a tough game left. they got to go two Bakkens in play, and, and uh, they can't take the Trojans lightly. Yeah, it's certainly been an exciting regular season. Looking forward to an exciting tournament as well. That's going to do it for the first half of our show. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, going to talk some softball, including that big interview with for sales coach Michelle Heitkamp. Stay there. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the second half of Fish Report Live. Ken, before the break, we were talking some baseball, and we ended it with talking about the Shelby County League baseball. Uh, let's uh, let's get a quick recap on Shelby County League softball. Where are we sitting at there right now? Well, Craig, uh, Fort Lorme at 9-1 and one right now, sitting atop the league standings. The Houston Wildcats uh, just a game back in 8-2. and two, So Redskins kind of in the driver's seat right now, controlling their own destiny. Uh, a couple games back and sitting in third place is Anna and Rushi. All right, and uh, th- that regular season just finishing up, and their tournament starts when? Starts on Monday, Craig. Uh, you know, the, the teams without the first-round buys will all be uh, taking the field Monday already for uh, postseason action. All right, well, one uh, – speaking of softball, we're going to go over to the MAC and, and the – conference has already been decided over there the Versailles Tigers took first place in that the second time they've done it in the past three years Ken one big reason for their success is their head coach Michelle Heitkamp we actually had her on this show four years ago or, or season one actually during our our rookie season during her rookie season happy to have her back again this year she's live right now coach Heitkamp welcome to Fish Report Live and thanks for joining us hi thanks for having me 
Well, listen, the last time we talked to you was back in 2012, uh, that our first season on the show. And, and certainly Ken and I feel like we've made some improvements since that first season. It seems like you've made some improvements over there as well. Had three winning, your, your last three seasons have all been three winning seasons. Like I just mentioned, two MAC championships and the past three years. Uh, are you happy with where this program's at right now? Oh, definitely. I'm very pleased with, you know, how far we've come from the softball program. Um, I'm fortunate to have very dedicated coaching staff, and the kids have been great to work with. Um, each season we try to improve, and so far that, you know, we're headed in the right direction. All right. Well, certainly you you played well Tuesday night when you run rolled Arushi Raiders over here twelve to one in six innings. Uh, two of the girls coach that played really well in that game seem to have been playing all well all season. That's your pitcher Rachel Wenning, and, and I believe your shortstop over there Kristen Langston. Do you, I, I know when we asked you a question back in two thousand twelve, if you had a leader on that team, and you didn't want to exactly say that, you you felt like they were all leaders. These two girls seem like leaders to me. What what what, what would you say about that? Um, those two definitely lead by example, but. Again, um, we have many players on the team that are leaders, and they all do a great job at picking each other up, and, and I think that's what has helped us to succeed on the field because of their team effort. Coach, hi, this is Ken Francis. Uh, you've already wrapped up a MAC, a MAC championship. Congratulations on that. Uh, you've got a Thank couple, you. You've got a couple non-league games uh, remaining, and then uh, tournament trail starts Monday. You'll be taking on Northridge at Versailles. Uh, the last couple years, uh, you've made it to the district, haven't been able to get out of the district. I'm sure it's a goal of yours this year to get to the regionals at least. What's it going to take for the Tigers to get there, and what's your tournament draw look like? Um, I was real pleased with tournament draw last weekend. Um, you know, advancing you know, past the district would be awesome, and it's definitely a goal, and it would you know, help our program continue to head in the right direction. Um, Actually, I've been very surprised, you know, coming into this season. I, I really considered a rebuilding season since, you know, we had graduated several seniors last year that were just tremendous players. Um, but the idea of advancing past district, that would be just wonderful. Coach, uh, you've, you've got a few alumni uh, that are playing college softball right now. Uh, you've got Kayla McEldowney playing at Rio University and Madison Monin playing at Sinclair. Uh, Obviously, they were very important to uh, to getting your program going. Are you able to stay in contact with those girls and follow their college successes? Um, I, you know, I talked with Madison some. I know she's had a great time at St. Clair, and I know she's planning to continue to play um, in Tennessee. I believe it's at the University of Cumberland um, to finish her career, and, and she was a huge part of you know helping our program um, head in the right direction. Haven't had um, as much contact with Kayla. Um, but I haven't been in touch with Miranda Huddle, who's also played this year, third base for Ohio State. And so it's just awesome to see, you know, several of the girls enjoying softball at that college level. Coach, I've got a, uh, a coaching question for you. Uh, you know, a lot of the, the towns, Rushi included, for sales, I'm sure, are very big into the, the youth summer softball programs, uh, you know, setting the foundation, the base for these young kids to, uh, to take on fast pitch softball and, and to develop their skills. Uh, as a successful high school coach, what advice could you give to, uh, say, the, the local moms and dads that are out there trying to coach the, uh, the young elementary kids at the softball programs? Well, first off, I think above anything, I think it, it would, it's great to instill the idea that it's fun, just to make, you know, going out there, playing the game, make it fun, not too stressful for the kids. But, you know, also teaching the girls that it's awesome to slide and get dirty. You know, that's not just for the boys. But I think the most important thing for those young players is to really focus on those fundamentals, not focusing so much on the winning, as if the fundamentals are there, the winning can come later. Good answer, Coach. And, hey, listen, one more question. I'll let you go. And this doesn't really pertain to your team so much, but uh, you're involved with For Sale School over there. You're a teacher as well as a coach. And, and coming up this Friday is something kind of special that your baseball team is hosting uh, against the Minster Wildcats. And it's, it's, it's special because it's a benefit uh, called, I think, Rally for Ruddy. Uh, I, what's that all about, and, and how can people in the community show their support for this? Well, like you said, it is the baseball game um, with us with Minster and they're going to do, be doing some fundraising to help support Kyle. We're showing the baseball player. Um, what I've been told is that I know they're going to have a 50-50 drawing and a bake sale to help, you know, with the fundraising. Yeah, uh, Kyle kind of went through some health problems there, and, and, and I know it's a, it's, a, it's a big fundraiser, a, a good thing, and, and hopefully people can come out and show their support. So, 
Well, Coach A, listen, I want to thank you for coming on our show tonight. Again, uh, congratulations on another MAC championship. Best of luck in the tournament. Fortunately, our Rushi Raiders won't have to run into you being in Division Three. But uh, best of luck to you, and, and we look forward to seeing you sometime soon. All right. Thank you very much. All right. That was the head coach of the Versailles Tigers, Michelle Heitkamp Ken. And three years ago, we had her on this show. Got her back on again, don't we? Yep. Her, uh, she's got a successful program over there in Versailles, doing very well. And uh, like you said, her, her program has improved, and I think our program's improved as well. It sure has. All right, well, listen, we got just a couple minutes left to go in the show. And, and Ken, I want to talk about something we talked about last week, and that was the uh, the retirement, I guess you say, of, of Rushi coach Paul Bremigen, uh after 31 years, uh, retired from the Rushi program. But it didn't take long. And he's uh, got another job, doesn't he? Yeah, he does, Craig. He's back at it. Uh, he's going to be the head coach of the Troy Trojans, uh, joining the G-Walk over there, definitely stepping up several classes, going from Division Four all the way up to Division One. Uh, it's going to be a great challenge for him. I'm sure he's obviously looking very much forward to it. And uh, we wish him the best of luck. You know, he did a great job with the Rushi program for the last 31 years, and uh, I'm sure uh, he'll do a great job over at Troy as well. All right, and then also another big announcement today, uh, one we've been kind of waiting on, Marion Local Girls, after the retirement of Treva Fort Camp over there, have hired a new coach, and that is Beth Stribe. She was the assistant coach over there for a long time, and according to the, uh, the WCSM.com, she is a 2001 graduate of Marion Local High School. She participated in volleyball and basketball, and she actually continued her playing days in college at Ashland University, and she was, like I said, a longtime assistant actually for nine years. She currently teaches in the Parkway School System, so might have to get Coach Stribe on this show sometime in the near future. I would say there's a good bet we will. All right, well, one more thing to get to, and that is tonight's trivia question. Why don't you ask me the question again? We'll check in with Heavy D back there and see what the telemetrics say. All right, we talked a lot of Mac tonight, Craig, and we've talked some Versailles, so we're going to blend the two together here. What league did the Versailles Tigers belong to before they joined the Mac in 2001? Was it the CCC, the NWCC, the SRC, which was the old Southwest Rivers Conference, or were they an independent? Okay, well, I, I kind of was – my first thought was the SRC, the Southwest R Rivers Conference, but you did so much talking about the CCC, you got me th overthinking it here. So I'm thinking – Maybe it's the CCC. I'm not sure. Let's go back to Heavy D. Heavy D, how's things going back there flying solo tonight? Yeah, not too bad. Um, a little bit more room back here to work. <laughs> um, Craig, let me go ahead and ping the Fish Report satellite and uh, check on those latest results here. Pinging the satellite. Well, hopefully it doesn't take too long to, to, to get the ping the satellite. Get tally in the results. Okay, uh, we've got a clear favorite, the... I think we called it the Southwest Rivers Conference. That was my that was my first guess. No no votes for the CCC. Zero. All right, Ken. Well, I'm going to go with the viewers. I'm going to go with my first thought, and that is the SRC, the Southwest Rivers Conference. Tell me I'm right. Craig, you're right again. Right. I'm going to toughen it up on you next week. I think you got it right a couple weeks in a row. So, But, uh, yep, uh, Versailles is the next member of the uh, Southwest Rivers Conference. Really wanted to ask the question, what league was Fort Recovery in? But uh, after a little research, I uh, couldn't find the answer, so couldn't ask the question. So if any of our listeners out there, Fort Recovery fans out there tonight, uh, you can uh, send an email or uh, a tweet to Craig. And uh, really curious, what league was Fort Recovery in before they joined the MAC in 1978? I bet you there's some northern viewers that, that probably know that answer. I bet they do. All right, well, that's going to do it for our show tonight. I do want to say a special thanks to Coach Kalp and also Coach Heitkamp for joining us on the show tonight. Ken and I and Heavy D and hopefully TK will all be back again next week. Same time, same place. Until then, have a great rest of the week, and good night, everyone. Tune in to the Fish Report, hanging at the Fish Report.